Okay. Okay, okay. Greetings, everyone. Greetings. I'm gonna leave that screen muted out. Go back to my, my Zoom screen. There we go. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Dorsey's Resource. Thank you all for joining. This is going to be part three, a continuation uh, that I was doing on the Wizard of Oz series, by the way. Want to give you guys the uh, title. So the title of this uh, topic is going to be Wizard of Oz's Encrypted Connection to Sovereignty Part 3. I wanted to uh, relate this information as I was breaking down how it's related to the redemption education. Uh, this video is going to be action packed, uh, more in depth. It's going to finish some of the uh, areas of the movie, the breakdown of the encrypted connection that I did not get to as of yet. I know many of you all by now may be probably sleep. Uh, I do apologize coming before, coming before you guys late. I know many of you guys have um, Monday morning as the workday. So I know uh, as of this time, this is Sunday night going into Monday, early Monday morning of December 20th, by the way. I have uh, a lot of notes prepared. Basically, I'm not sure if I'm going to get to everything. So, uh, but I do intend to finish the uh, parts that I was covering prior, by the way, just to give you guys a heads up. Also, under Fair Use Act, uh, any photos, images shown this uh, for document for educational purposes, like I give in the disclaimer, this video is going to be for educational, informational, entertainment purposes. This information is not to be construed as legal advice at all. In the event you feel you need to seek a competent professional, it is always encouraged you do so at one's own leisure. Dorsey's resource channel is not liable or responsible for anyone's misuse of the information. By the way, uh, what I'm going to do right now, keep in mind, everyone is responsible for their own commercial affairs. All rights are reserved. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, hopefully, it'll allow me to share. I'm going to go to this part, um, this screen right there so hopefully okay if i can find the uh, other documents i had pulled up okay i kind of left off okay we're going to go to the redemption manual some of this is going to be like maybe a little bit of a, a rehash but it's going to tie in as i was finishing up this is from the redemption within the redemption manual uh, that came out some years ago, they did a breakdown within a particular section. As I previously mentioned, similar to the movie Matrix, there's a connection. I haven't actually uh, covered or delved into that yet, so maybe down the road, um, possibly, but this is something, a topic I already was aware of. I've known about for many years, by the way. I'm still learning new things. Uh, thank you guys for the feedback uh, that you've given, the few comments uh, for those out there on uh, previous videos. So as I was finishing off, the word ace is etymology related to the word axe, like the tin man that carried the axe. Uh, and one of the deck of cards, the only one above the king is the ace, uh, which also uh, equals like God, I guess, uh, one of the axis powers of World War II Italy uh, represented a fascist state, the symbol for fascism is the fasces a bundle of rods with an ax bound up in the middle and it's uh, blade projecting. It says the fasces, um, hopefully if I'm pronouncing it correctly, uh, may, be, may be found on the reverse of the American Mercury head dime. It is also in Roman deity, Mercury was the god of commerce. This is important, the god of commerce. It also can be found on the wall behind and on each side of the speaker's podium in the U.S. Senate. Each gilded fasces is approximately six feet in height. And at the base of the seal of the U.S. Senate are two crossed fasces. The third character that Dorothy met was the cowardly lion or king of beasts. And as the most feared of all animals in the jungle was lacking courage. 
The lion is symbolic of the once fearless American people who have since lost their courage. Yes, there are a lot of hot talkers out there. Just listen to your local radio talk shows. American men love to talk, but none have the courage to do a damn thing. This is what this article is saying that's going through the correlation has emphasis, um, exclamation point. The American people are scared of the corporate federal system and local revenue co collectors. I would say not everyone, to, uh, not stereotype, of course, but this is referring to the symbology that this movie had that was encoded, how Americans lose their fear uh, with the lion partially. I talked about this before, but this section is going over this part and goes into some other things, by the way, which I'm reading. It says uh, cops and judges and their so-called courtrooms, tribunals of justice uh, has in parentheses commerce. After your first few uh, go arounds with the just us system. Yeah, I remember just us. That's another trick word. That's just us. The way this is spelled, uh, believing there was justice in the courts. You probably lost some of your courage, too. And you may have not known known it, but the IRS has been dealing with your straw man. Uh, it has debtor in parentheses strictly under the laws of commerce, and they are just like the Tin Man, heartless. By the way, I kind of covered how you know your legal person, the N Lingus, actually have the definitions pulled up. By the way, in the Word documents, in case you're wondering where's the receipts, where's the evidence, I'm going to go since I'm sharing my screen. This is the definition. Says what is N Lingus? says a creature of law and artificial being as contrasted with the natural person. Remember also spoke of natural person is a distinctly separate definition of just the regular term person and individual. There's legal implications behind this word. You gotta understand that uh, le legally applied to corporations considered as deriving their existence entirely from the law and lingus a creature of the law. Let me see if I can find another part that's kind of a rehash It said Black's law. Dictionary fourth edition and legis is the precise legal description of the all capital letters name straw man trade name, by the way. OK, let me go to the other screen that I uh, was reading from. OK, it says uh, after Dorothy and her three companions made their way to Oz, they had learned they had to go see the wizard. To find the wizard, they uh, had to just go follow the yellow brick road. Gold is known as yellow bricks and are melted into ingots. All one has to do is follow the trail of America's stolen gold and you will find the thief who stole it. In the beginning, the movie The Wizard of Oz was represented by the traveling mystic Professor Marvel. Okay, let me make sure I'm on the proper face whom Dorothy encountered when she ran away with Toto, his uh, Macaber, Mac, Macaber Shingle uh, touted that he was acclaimed by the crown heads of Europe, past, present, and future. Sounds like I read, I went over that part already. This kind of goes over, this is before the bankers stole America, they had long since disempowered the Christian monarchies of Europe and looted their kingdoms. Maybe this Professor Marvel fellow knew something about the future that other folks didn't. With a human skull peering down from its painted perch above the door inside his wagon, the good professor lectured Dorothy of the priests of Isis and Osiris and the days of pharaohs of Egypt. Okay, it appears as though I went over that part. Let me see if there's another section. Okay, it says, then came the Wicked Witch of the West for the ruby slippers that Dorothy was wearing. Keep in mind that was different from versus the book. When the book was written, the one, the version that was published in 1914, this was prior to the movie, Dorothy wore silver slippers. Okay. And there was different symbolism in, in the movie versus the book, slightly different when it came to the uh, ruby slippers. A significant point here in the original book, The Wizard of Oz, uh, published in 1900, 39 years earlier, the slippers were not red, but silver. And the first cut of the movie, the slippers were silver, but changed to red to be more colorful. At the time the book was written, America still had all its gold and silver. The value of one ounce of gold, that was uh, the bartering system uh, they had at the time, uh, by the way. Like you had Morgan dollars and peace dollars during that time period. Uh, the American people were using to transact uh, 
their monetary transactions at the time, those who were alive. Uh, that was the common uh, use of barter between those particular precious metals, by the way. You also had gold, gold coins as well that were uh, in circulation at that time. The value of one ounce of, of gold was set at 15 ounces of silver, with silver being the more plentiful of the two metals and generally known as poor man's gold. Okay. Just as the silver slippers carried Dorothy America's stockpile of silver and gold backing the currency, carried the country to a position of preeminence throughout the world at the time. But as mentioned, when the movie came out in 1939, the slippers were not silver, but red. Okay, this is like a rehash. Uh, between 1916 and 1933, most of America's gold was rounded up by the privately owned Federal Reserve banks and shipped off to the Fed owners in England and Germany. The reason for this was that the Federal Reserve notes could, could be redeemed in gold and the use of Federal Reserve notes carried an interest penalty that could only be paid in gold. The American people were defrauded into trading their gold for worthless paper with green ink on it. Our previous currency, the United States notes, carried no such uh, interest requirements, but such was the bargain that came with Federal Reserve notes. The reason JFK was murdered was because he was reissuing the United States notes interest-free. By the way, and there was an executive order that was tied in with that, uh, called, by the way, called elect, Executive Order 111100, I believe. Don't quote me exactly on it. Uh, one can do their own research, their homework to look it up. I believe it's Executive Order 111100. That was in implemented by uh, JFK. It's one of the reasons, uh, main reasons it was believed that led to his uh, murder. By the way, one of the first orders of business that Lyndon Baines Johnson, who was the uh, vice president uh, at the time, who took over uh, as interim president after Kennedy was assassinated, uh, his first order of business was stated, uh, some documents that I read prior was to repeal Executive Order 111100, which shows a definite strong connection that the people behind JFK's murder was connected to the banking cartel. Uh, the banking mafia, some uh, refer to them as, by the way. So this document was going over some of this history. Some things I already know. The re um, so this is the reason, one of the reasons it's believed to be, was other reasons as well, uh, not just that. But I won't, since this video is not geared towards that, just want to cover that since it was mentioned within this document, by the way. When the bankruptcy was declared in 1933, it states Americans were required, misdirected to turn in all gold coin, gold bullion, and gold certificates by May 1st, known as May Day, the, the birthday of communism in Bavaria in 1776, the birth of the IRS, and celebrated worldwide as the International Workers' Holiday, a holy day of the wizard and his tribe. And I will also add on, keep in mind, 1776, it's a symbolic year. If you pull out the back of a dollar bill and Roman numerals, I believe it's, at, it's located at the bottom of the pyramid, you would need a magnifying glass, uh, by the way. But if you pull out a regular dollar bill, uh, most people can do their own research. It states uh, the same year that the Bavarian Illuminati was formed uh, by commissioned by uh, Adam Weishaupt was commissioned by Laura Amsel Bauer Rothschild was the same year, 1776, that America was uh, allegedly founded. So there's symbolism behind this particular date, but it can be looked at on the back of the uh, dollar bill. And Roman numerals, uh, it should equal 1776, by the way. So talking to the people who were alive at the time, you may find out that the general sentiment towards such thievery border on a second revolution says maybe it was uh, just too much of a clue or too much salt in the wound for Dorothy to be skipping down the yellow brick road in a pair of silver slippers so that, for whatever reason, a colorless likely to uh, annoy or provoke was selected uh, red. So it's going over the reasons why they changed uh, the silver slippers that she wore from when the book was written to why they switched over to red in the movie. And that also tied in, uh, just so you guys, to let you all know ahead of time, 
with your red ink signature, like while you were signed or certain documents are done in red, but it also symbolized by your blood because your signature is your most powerful possession. By the way, as I would add to that, a lot of people are unaware uh, how that ties in with a lot of contracts that people get engaged with in commerce. By the way, it says with regard to the choice of the ruby or red color slippers, red's primary primary significance, at least on documents and the like, is that it is the color of blood and in uh, as in flesh and blood and symbolizes a living, breathing man or woman slash non-corporate slash non-artificial. The color red could also have been the cho chosen for the related tie to the International Banking Federal Reserve founder, the Rothschilds, AKA Red Shield family. It does signify private as opposed to public. Like uh, someone, a uh, sister had asked me privately very recently, not too long ago. I mentioned this maybe a couple of times in the previous video, uh, did the IRS have a private side? And I was told, informed by one of my private sources, I got back with her on a, one of the private messenger apps and let her know. My private source told me the uh, red forms are symbolized, the, uh, which would be like some of the, the 1099 forms symbolize the private side. As this document is saying, which you guys should be able to see my screen that I'm sharing, he stated signifies the private side, uh, by the way, as opposed to the public. Now, some of the black and white forms, by the way, I will say that the IRS uh, has some of those forms do deal with the uh, private side. But I would say the majority of them uh, deal with the public side. But there is a way sometimes with the way you contract or you conduct, you do business, you can convert an instrument. Sometimes they're referred to as uh, to the private side or, or uh, change the jurisdiction with based on how you're contracting with that particular uh if you understand, you have to overstand what you're doing, uh, by the way. So that's a little bit, you know, will go above a lot of people's heads. So I'll go to the next paragraph. Your new social security card has a red serial number on the reverse, likely signifying the private side slash bond slash account. If you uh, have a newer copy, if you order newer copies of your social security card, many of them, they, those red numbers on the back uh, have sim symbolic meaning. Some people have called them, referred to them as your bond number attached. Uh, it says to the public side of your uh, straw man social security account. For postal employees, the red sticker registered mail means personal accountability. The private side I read on, in, on certain documents many years ago that those red numbers were issued by the U.S. Treasury, by the way. I don't know if this document... It references, I don't think it references, but just on a side note, so some people were using that for uh, bonds they were using back back then when they had old technology, by the way, when they were attempting to do discharges, which were successful, I personally witnessed at the time. Now, a lot of things have changed. I won't go into all those details because it's a lot to unpack. And uh, just for the purpose sake of time, I'm just trying to stay on topic to show the correlation, uh, how this movie is encrypted, what ties in with uh, sovereignty and the redemption process procedures, by the way. But those uh, register mail stickers play a role in how uh, people conducted and, and attempting to utilize discharges, which were successful uh, many years ago. Now I can't speak for nowadays how often if they're still utilized for the few people out there that may be aware uh, that have attempted those, but there are new processes uh, more advanced uh, than, than those procedures. But that's uh, some of the procedures we were using many years ago. By the way, just FYI for your information. Okay, it says, it is likely that the ruby slippers symbolize the American people with blood in their veins as opposed to citizens of the United States straw men with counterfeit uh, corporate blood of the blue slash black ink on a birth certificate. No matter their color in the movie, the Wicked Witch of the West wanted those slippers at any cost and had to move fast before Dorothy and her new crew could make it to the Emerald City. The witch's tactic was to cover the countryside with poppy flowers or poppies, the source of heroin, opium, and morphine, symbolically drugging them, and I would say, aka the American people, into unconsciousness 
and then Walsh whisked away and snatched uh, the slippers. That was her goal. In other words, the best way to subjugate the American people and boost the goods was to dull their senses by getting them hooked on drugs. LSD was created the same year, 1939, by Dr. Albert Hoffman. The poppy slash drugs worked on Dorothy the Lion and Toto, our flesh and blood friends, but had no effect on the Scarecrow and the Tin Man, the artificial entities. Okay, the two of them cried out for help and Glenda, the good witch of the North, answered their prayers with a blanket of snow, a.k.a. cocaine, a stimulant nullifying the narcotic effect of the poppy slash opium on Dorothy the Lion and Toto. At this writing, aside from marijuana, the two most available drugs on the street of America are heroin and cocaine in their various forms. As they all scampered toward Emerald City, the city of green, Federal Reserve notes, the new fiat money or money by decree, we heard the munchkin singing on the glory of the wizard's creation. You're out of the woods, you're out of the dark, you're out of the night, step into the sun, step into the light, keep straight ahead, for the most glorious place on the face of the earth or, or the stars. The foregoing jingle abounds with the Illuminati dash Luciferian symbols and metaphors, darkness and light. The Wicked Witch of the West made her home in a round medieval watchtower ancient symbol of the Knights Templar of Freemasonry who are given to practicing witchcraft and also credited as the origins, originators of modern banking, circa 1099 AD. The Wicked Witch of the West was also dressed in black, the color symbolizing the planet Saturn, sacred icon of the Knights Templar, and the color of choice of judges, priests for their roles. Uh, notice also when people graduate from uh, colleges, etc., many times, uh, not always, they uh, wear black robes as symbolic. Uh, as, it, as it already mentioned, like with judges in the court court system, a lot of them wear black robes. Who is the Wicked Witch of the West? And Jordan Maxwell also broke that down. If many of you are familiar with Jordan Maxwell, uh, he talked about that connection too many years ago as, as him being an alternative uh, historian, by the way, those familiar with his research, by the way. Remember in the first part of the film, her counterpart uh, was... Almera Gulch, who had, uh, according to Auntie M, owned half the country. This is going in the beginning part of the film before uh, Dorothy went into the dream after the uh, storm and tornado had happened and she went into the artificial uh, world. If you go back and watch the beginning of the movie, uh, Miss Gulch alleged that Dorothy's dog Toto had bitten her. She came to the farm with an order from the sheriff demanding that they surrender Toto to her custody. Uh, Aunt M was not immediately cooperative and answered Mrs. Gulch's allegations that Toto had bitten her with, uh, he's really gentle with, uh, with gentle people, that is. Could gentle really mean Gentile? And has question mark. When Miss Gulch defied them, the two withhold, uh, withheld, I would say typo, uh, Toto and went against the law. Dear old Aunt M, was relegated to pushing the party line for Big Brother. She dutifully succumbed to the pressure and uh, counseled Dorothy reluctantly, does this sound like most American people? When we can't go against the law, Dorothy, I'm afraid poor Toto will have to go. This is when you're a uh, regular citizen, US corporate citizen, you're not taught about the private side or how the ruling class elite, how they operate, by the way, this may be for like an advanced master course, this part I'm going over right here, but this will apply to the majority of the American public who are brainwashed, who are dumbed down, who may be unaware this uh, symbolic connection I'm breaking down, how they succumb to the pressure, similar to how Aunt M succumbed to the pressure, because Miss um, Gulch in the movie, I guess, uh, as Aunt M had previously mentioned from the part I read, I guess she was very wealthy. Uh, I have to probably go back and watch the movie. I get the concept as this is breaking down, but this is showing a correlation how this sounds like most of the American people when they deal with uh, court matters. I'm afraid poor Toto will have to go. Think from watching the movie, if I can recollect, the police may have showed up in the movie when that part happened. Uh, it says, 
when uh, Dorothy refused to surrender Toto, Miss Gulch lashed out, if you don't hand over that dog, I'll bring a damn suit, uh, lawsuit that I'll take your whole farm. Today, 70 percent of all attorneys in the West world in the world reside in the West uh, America, to be exact. And 95 percent of all lawsuits in the world are filed under U.S. jurisdiction. The Wicked Witch of the West and Miss Gulch, uh, dear friends, represent judges and attorneys, the American legal system, including the attorney run U.S. Congress. They are the executioners and primary henchmen for transferring all wealth in America from the people over to the banks and the government. The Wicked Witch of the West wanted the silver slippers, the precious metals, and her counterpart, Miss Gulch, wanted to take Toto. What does the word Toto mean? In attorney language, uh, says, uh, i.e. Latin, uh, everything. I kind of went over that prior. Uh, one of the... Uh, articles i don't know if it's this uh book i'm going over or the other article i have pulled up goes over how total means uh oh no excuse me the word anza is an abbreviation for ounces and ounces uh it's, it's a translation means in italian uh to weigh things which you will weigh uh precious metals uh in by the way this document might go over that as i still i'm finishing up i believe i'm almost done with this part and I can go some, both of these documents are similar. So this is like a rehash, but some people might not have caught some of the things that I went over previously. If you watch the two previous videos, this is action packed, powerful information that applies even to this very day in society, how the reason why things are set up a certain way is symbolism and it's encrypted, it's encoded. So Dorothy and her three companions finally made their way to the Emerald City they sought an audience before the wizard were taken inside and brought before the wizard a gigantic image speaking in a loud voice behind glass similar to smoke and mirrors. Dorothy and the gang fell for the wizard's illusion, power, and commands in the beginning, but it was little Toto who, by his instinct, pulled the curtain back to expose the fraud of the wizard, a front man for the wizard, an agent for the fiction. This wizard, the people feared. The wizard, this gigantic image speaking in a loud voice behind glass, could very well symbolize with the advent of television, the power of the government speaking lies before the people via TV. I would say propaganda to add to that, like what goes on in modern day society. Because if the people saw it on TV, it must be true. And of course, this programming, tell it, you get a television program, programming propaganda, it's still used to this day in modern society, of course. Like, of course, with this uh, scandemic that's going on with this uh, poison, they're trying to convince you to take, that they're trying to also all of a sudden convince you that it's safe uh, for you. And you have to ask, who brought the Omicron variant over here when it was the unvax who were not allowed to travel uh, overseas, by the way? They were very strict about that because I live in a border city, uh, by the way, border state, that has a bridge uh, down downtown area where I'm at. And uh, they're very strict about you having to, to uh, show proof of you taking that uh, poison to passport your way over. But one has to question who brought the Omicron over here? Uh, that had to be the, the vax, which still doesn't prevent transmission. But that's neither here nor there. Let me stop with that. But get back to this uh, symbolism. It says, because if the American people saw it on TV, it must be true. It's like today's society, of course, the people will believe their government, won't they? Remember the drugs, the symbolism I just went over from reading. But Dorothy and the others soon wised up and revealed the wizard for what he was, a confidence man. Then when asking the agent slash administrative agencies about helping the scarecrow slash straw man about getting a brain, he gave the straw man a piece of paper and a diploma from a university. The wizard also cited the land of e pluribus unum, which is Latin for uh, one out of many converting the many into uh, one world order or novus ordo sacrolum, a Latin phrase placed on the American $1 bill shortly after the bankruptcy. Wow, this is powerful. You look at, it has 
on the back of the dollar bill at the bottom of the pyramid, Novus Ordo Sacroum. So that's Latin for New World Order. I learned that years ago. And I knew it, uh, a new coeptus that has a meaning uh, at the top, by the way. I forget specifically what that means, but it's got a key portion. So it says, this is a Latin phrase placed on the American $1 bill shortly after the bankruptcy. He also probably revealed slash confessed that he was born and bred in the heart of the Western wilderness and old Kansas man myself. Once again, Kansas is geographically located in the center of the United States. So it was symbolic and there was a difference between the alphabetical grammatical rules of grammar why Kansas is abbreviated KS and spelled in all caps to represent the state. But there's a difference between Kansas, the physical state versus the corporate Kansas. Like if you're in court and you wanna cross examine and you say to the judge, is this a civil or is it a criminal matter? Uh, when you cross examine, because the uh, state that you're in, if they say it's the state of Michigan, the state of Ohio, that refers to the corporate political body. Some instances, they have to produce an injured party. Who is the injured party in this case, uh, by the way? This is how some of this ties in with the legal system, how they're using symbolism. But if no one's never taught this information, they, would have, they wouldn't have a clue. You get it? So I'm just kind of using that example. But there's a difference in the rules of grammar based on how words are spelled there's a legal implication behind that legally, by the way, understand this is it's a legal between difference between what we were taught in grade school early on elementary school versus the legal system. By the way, some of these same words are encrypted. Like I previously went over the definition of understand has a different meaning of what we were taught in grade school where we were taught it means to comprehend, but in the court system, it has a different meaning. It means you accept the contract. So you see how these things are interconnected, tied in with one another, you see. I'll say, okay, going back over, he gave the tin man a ticker clock to sound like a heart, but it was not. And to the lion, he gave a medal to signify that the lion had courage. These all, of course, were mere trinkets in the land of Oz, a fictional world, of course. The bankers did pretty well in Europe, but as the wizard pointed out, they made a killing in the Western wilderness, America, with the theft of the American gold, labor, and property, uh, quoting John D. Rockefeller, grateful and responsive rural folk who populated the country at that time. When Dorothy asked Glenda, the good witch of the North, representing honesty, good faith, and Christianity for helping and getting back to Kansas, Glenda replied, you, you don't need to be helped. You've always had the power to go back to Kansas. Just click your heels together three times, three days, truth and lending, and say there's no place like home. Well, they added this part in there. That's contractually uh, how well, I was going over a lot, little bit of the legal stuff. I never, I never really drew that comparison, and I'm familiar with that. Uh, there's, uh, that's encoded within the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. There's a, a specific uh, statute. I won't say. I still remember it that I use, uh, I've used in the past to avoid uh, certain contracts. It's highly advanced. By the way, I had someone on the inside that used to work for a post, off, post office that told me about a specific term and the process that I would utilize. I'm just not going into the details about it, but it's interesting uh, how this document is tying in the symbolism, legally, some of the legalities, sometimes of everyday transactions, even if you don't necessarily uh, do contract with the court system, but in commerce, everyday business that you transact, uh, you know, and I know things are becoming more digital. We're moving to, you know, electronic or paperless uh, age, by the way, but very interesting symbolism. Okay, on to the next paragraph. It says translation, you've always had the right and power to reclaim your sovereignty. You just forgot or were never taught that you or the American people have such power. The Oregon Bill of Rights says the people have all power. Since the people are the true sovereign power, then it is only necessary to wake from the dumbed down drug-like effect the powers that be have over you and the American people as to the power and position and then exercise it. The actual reclaiming of your sovereignty, the remedy in today's bankrupt commercial world is a process 
including a UCC one form to the secretary of state and a charge back to the secretary of the treasury, wherein you take commercial control of your straw man with a TIN that stands for tax identification number. Now I would say just on a side note, those familiar with that, that is an old process that deals with the SPC. That's an acronym for secure party creditor process. I can't say if some of those things still work. There is updated information I have from an advanced private source that's uh, told me there's a new way uh, because there are forces out there that were trying to stop people from filing UCC1 financing statements. It's simply a document that puts the state on notice that you as a secure party uh, have a vested interest in your uh, your property, your uh, legal person, your in lingus, and that you're claiming you're just putting simply putting the state on notice. You're making public notice. You're creating a public record that you have a lien uh, over a particular property. And it, it can be uh, different types of property. Uh, you have tangible property. You have intangible property. I encourage one to do their own research, but I discovered when I did a series a while ago, some of my older videos, you have to scroll back on the um, that book uh, I, I learned taught at certain colleges called business law, by the way, it may be called business and the law that I'm assuming certain legal students take some uh, finance majors may take some of these different disciplines, career, career paths overlap one another. Within the chapters of that book, they had a specific chapter that dealt with UCC financing statements called secure transactions. So there will be entities that will try to that try to hide this information within gatekeepers within the public sector that try to make it seem like they are ignorant. They have never been taught this information because they were brainwashed. They were dumbed down, uh, by the way. Uh, so you can't always fault them, uh, by the way but they just simply didn't know. But those in the know, this is where it's compartmentalized, where people that are going into the legal field or certain types of career paths that come across business and law, uh, by the way, one of the chapters was called uh, Secure Transactions that dealt with UCC financing statements. There was another chapter also that dealt with negotiable instruments that was called Commercial Paper by the way, or generally it would be called commercial paper and it deals with different types of negotiable instruments like bills of exchanges. And it actually mentioned site drafts in that book, which the bankers use trickery to get away from, to steal your wealth from you, where they're supposed to be accepting certain types of negotiable instruments by law that are distinctly separate from uh, the GSA bonds. Because that law that a uh, certain individual mentioned that where well, the government can uh, discharge debt when they want to. That applies that law specifically to in Title 31, uh, forget Section 3113 or something like that. That law specifically applied more so to GSA bonds. But that was I did a previous video on it. Those uh, instruments were distinctly different from different types of promissory notes or certain types of negotiable instruments and bill of exchanges that are supposed to be accepted within the everyday commerce of the banking system. But since you know they've dumbed down most of the American people, the bankers at the top intentionally did not train their lower level minions and bankers that work at a lot of these institutions that are members of the Federal Reserve Bank. That's why when you ask or you go into some of these banks and these tellers uh, or even branch managers will be unfamiliar with what you're talking about, unless some of them have had a background in securities uh, where they have a securities or brokerage license, uh, they will be oblivious to what you're referencing to. So you see this was done intentionally to, you see, to dumb the uh, American people down and the bankers, the ruling class elite, aka the Illuminati, uh, that have done a number, have committed major fraud, have, uh, and, and this was very devious what they've done, but this is how things are encoded, encrypted in everyday commerce. By the way, just like this movie is encoded, encrypted. So I'll go on to uh, furthermore, Americans have intimate firsthand knowledge of the heartless mechanics of the laws of commerce religiously applied by the example of the unregistered foreign agents of the Internal Revenue Services, the IRS slash accounting firm and collection agency for the private Federal Reserve Bank was constituted under the UCC and its inception in 1954 and has been operating strictly in the realm ever since, by the way. Okay, next paragraph. It said, and as a side note, how was the wicked witch destroyed by accident 
a bucket of water, the true substance of all things, good and healthy, simple water, H2O, destroyed the evil, just like the O in ozone destroys viruses and bacteria slash cancer, did the oxygen and the water destroy the evil witch? And it has exclam exclamation point. So you guys still, should still be able to re see my screen because I'm doing a screen capture. Uh, this is what I like, like about the Zoom software. You may have wondered what the meaning is behind the words and the title, The Wizard of Oz. Look them up in the dictionary like almost everything else. It's right out in the open for you to see if you will just look closely enough. One definition of wizard is a very clever or skillful person. Oz, or the abbreviation of Anza, the Italian word for ounces or ounces, is the unit of measurement of gold and silver and other precious metals. No matter how large the quantity of gold or silver being discussed, the amount is always ounces rather than hundreds of tons of gold. It's so many millions of ounces of gold. As attested by the factual history of this country, the Wizard of Oz was the wizard of ounces. And who took the gold back? Who took the gold that backed the America's money? Why the bankers and the lawyers working for the foreign principles, the private Federal Reserve, constituting the 20 class A stockholders being mostly private bankers, all orchestrated and greased by politicians then and still today, only because it is not the mindset of politicians today to correct the matter and put full and absolute power over the control, creation, minting, and putting into circulation of the United States money backed by gold substance uh, slash value. What everyone has to understand is that as things are today, the commercial system as in place is better for everyone just as long as everyone understands the program. Maybe the Wizard of Oz back then was the introduction to the program as to the monetary condition and changes in America. It's just, it just appears that no one told slash gave full disclosure to the American people, not only of the change, but how to operate in this new commercial world where all the real value was removed and all that was put in its place was commercial paper, exclamation point. Everything worked out for Dorothy, i.e. the American people. In the end, she made it home, meaning there is remedy in law. It's, it's there. It was just encoded and disguised and camouflaged. Okay, hold on for a second, guys. Hold on for a second, guys. I may have to get ready to shut this down, um, this video down. So it uh, looks like to be continued. I want to thank you guys for joining. Don't forget to subscribe to Dorsey's Resource. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Minds.com. Real legends never die. They live in our hearts forever. You guys out there, stay woke. I appreciate you for joining. Everybody, if I didn't get a chance, if you guys join the comment section, I appreciate you guys joining. Until next time, take care. Peace. Deuces.